So recently there was a AMA, which is an Ask Me Anything, on the game Marvel's Avengers, and these are the new bits of information that you may not yet know about Marvel's Avengers. Let's get into it. So the first one is that Iron Man rarely shows up outside of his Iron Man suit. So he's always going to be like, you know, wearing that suit. You're probably never going to really see him outside of the suit. <laughs> Seems a bit weird. Like, I'm just imagining him in the bathroom still wearing the suit. Like, what? We also know that most of the content can be played with AI teammates on your team, but content such as raids, which are like some really high end content have to be played with other players and you can use a matchmaking system to find a group of players to actually go into a raid which takes about to an hour and two hours long we also know the game has many easter eggs which i'm sure we're all going to be looking for i mean marvel's kind of like prone to doing that all the time aren't they enemy health bars can actually not be turned off so that's that's interesting so you can't really have that immersive gameplay you're gonna have to see health bars all the time there are four different unique difficulty levels in the game. I'm assuming this is, might work much like Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, where you kind of just have to play the story of the war zone. In Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, it was friendly, mighty, superior, and then ultimate. So I wonder if they're going to adopt the same difficulty system. Where there are 80 Warzone missions, this doesn't mean that in each mission it's like entirely unique. They will use some of the same maps, but just change what kind of enemies are there or what objectives you have to do in that map. So that's how the Warzones are going to work. That's why we have so many unique Warzones. It's kind of just reusing the same map in just different ways. Here's a very interesting one. If you play with a friend on Marvel's Avengers, it will actually set the difficulty to the person with the lowest gear level in your party. So if your friend's very new at the game and you're at the end of the game, the difficulty will automatically be set to what your friend's low difficulty or power gear level is. So when you're trying to queue and do like really, really hard stuff and get really good gear, you're going to have to play with people who have really good really good gear so so that's how you're gonna have to play the game to get like really good stuff some later game content will actually require you to level up all your heroes to be able to complete those different like things in the game so look forward to that you're actually able to upgrade your traversal skills so like how you transport or fly or like you know deliver yourself across the map that's the weirdest way of saying that i just don't like the word traversal it just sounds odd to me i never use it so you can actually upgrade like how hulk jumps or like how far he jumps how quick he jumps in as an example so you can upgrade those those skills surprisingly you're unable to actually use text to chat in the game which seems very weird you're only really able to use party like chat game like you know with a microphone connected to the game and speak to people through that kind of means looking at how long certain things take in the game drop zones can take about 10 minutes war zone missions can last about 15 to 30 minutes the villain sectors or i think hives can last about 30 minutes or so but that's just a guess and as we talked about raids already those can last as like how a normal raid would last one to two hours long so it's quite a long kind of end game content thing that's going to be really difficult and you'll have to find a group of people who are like really like you know want to get this thing done and like do it right <laughs> that's gonna be so fun so you don't have to refund your skill points you can basically just move it in a skill tree it's kind of like in the way they explain it is like if you have like three options if you pick one the other two lock so you can only pick one of the three as an example so you kind of pick which one you can't have those two if you have this one you can't have you know the side ones if you have the middle one if you in, in essence so and the interesting is you can change gear and skill points for your abilities Whenever you are in any mission, you can just change it on the fly. Like you're just, you're like, you're mid combat. You're like, I'm going to change this. I'm just going to, you know, change my stuff. Easy peasy. <laughs> Intrinsic abilities will have skill levels as well. So where some missions will have guaranteed loot drops, most missions will basically have random stuff, you know, according to what your power level is or your gear level is on your on your hero. So if you have like a really high gear level, you're probably going to get higher gear drops unless you're partied with a friend who's like really low and you're going to get his level gear drops, which might suck. So, so you're going to have to play content that's difficult for you. If you're actually killed in combat and you're on multiplayer, you'll actually enter a spectator mode if you're not revived in time. And there's also cool ways to actually be revived or skills to make it so that you can revive your teammates quicker or even in cooler ways which is <laughs> i can't think of one that's super weird i can i just imagine thor just like zapping someone back to life <laughs> just yeah dude when you get loot you're actually able to store it in a vault so yeah you can store your stuff at least you are able to access the photo mode in co-op so you can take some really cool photos with your friends the photo mode also comes with different lenses and filters to take different styles of photos in game so the main attributes to build your heroes around are melee ranged heroic 
and defense. So you can build your heroes however you want alongside those four different kind of styles. When you play a harm room, you're unable to actually change what happens in the harm room. They're all pre-made, so you're unable to actually make any of your own changes or make your own harm room. You have to play what's already made for you. You can get two different types of nameplates in game. One for like all of your heroes and one for just like one unique hero. Some of the war zones that you have to do require specific heroes to play. So you're unable to actually always go into a war zone mission with whatever hero you want. You have to pick certain ones that are catered for that, that story or that mission. A very interesting thing is, you know, because a party consists of four teammates, if you join one other friend, you get to take one of your AI teammates who will actually be the same hero as your normal AI person. So if your hero that you play, he, he will be your AI like teammate. So if you like, it's let's say I play Hulk and I have a AI Thor, which I play as well. And whatever gear and stuff I've put on him, he will actually be selected in my party alongside with my friend and one of his little teammates. So basically I can go with my Hulk and his and my Thor and he'll be using his Black Widow and his Miss Marvel as an example. So that's pretty interesting. So you can take your like AI into that, you know, with your with your friend. I think that's cool. All of the missions in the game are replayable and this lets you grind gear and grind like materials for like unlocking different things or like crafting kind of stuff. I don't know. We, we, I don't really know where this is going to go, but it's to kind of like, you know, just craft stuff <laughs> or make new things or like, you know, just when I hear materials, I think Warframe, dude. I'm thinking Warframe right now. And those are some things you might not have known about Marvel's Avengers. Let me know which one was most surprising for you in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in a future one. Thank you for watching.